I've been beaten all my life. My body has got used to it. We'll call her Milana. She's around 30. She's from Chechnya, a small Muslim republic in southern Russia with archaic patriarchal customs and a hardline ruler. Ramzan Kadyrov, a protégé of Vladimir Putin. Kadyrov supports polygamy and the subjugation of women and does not tolerate free speech. Milana remains anonymous because in Chechnya, stories like hers are taboo. This car is from when my father used to give me the belt. Here is when he put a cigarette out. That's from being a beaten with a stick. He harassed me and was always touching me where it's not allowed when he was drunk. And I couldn't tell anyone about it because I was afraid to bring shame on my family. It was shame that drove Milana to flee Chechnya for this shelter in another part of Russia. She fears for her life after she was raped by a Chechen security officer who filmed it and is using the video as blackmail. My parents would have killed me, and even if my parents didn't, then my uncles or my cousins would have. In our clan, they'd certainly have found a man to kill me. The word victim doesn't exist for us. The woman is always at fault. To back up what she's saying, Milana shows us reports broadcast on Chechen state TV. Scenes of female humiliation orchestrated by Ramzan Kadyrov himself. He accuses the women of so-called honor crimes. Aren't you ashamed for your brother? Look at your hairstyle. Because of you, people are talking about his wife, saying she hangs out in all the cafes. It's because of such women that we have all these divorces, these dozens, hundreds of guys in prison, these hundreds of honor crimes. For us, if a woman is at fault, they call up her old clan. They say to the man, you're a man, aren't you? So sort your sister out then. Either you get her married or... Because of her ambition, because there's no one to calm her down, because there's no man to put her in her place. Given that she's mad and not right in the head, one should have read her the Quran, told her, hey, what are you doing? You, who are supposed to be her brother. Yes, I'm talking to you. You should have calmed your sister down. On June the 23rd this year, the president lambasted the mother of a 23-year-old woman. Accusing her daughter's husband of beating her to death a few days previously, she had had her body exhumed for an autopsy. Furious at what he deemed an affront to his vision of Islam, Kadyrov ruled that the children should be returned to the presumed killer who would face no further charges. Even if they have been taken away from you, your daughters will be returned. I'll look after their needs, I'll build a house, I'll do everything for them. A month later, Chechen TV shows the family in law moving into their new house. It's this kind of impunity that forces Chechen women to suffer in silence. This refuge in the Chechen capital does offer them temporary accommodation. Its main aim, though, is mediation, to get them to return to their families. It's our traditional way of resolving relations within the family. Our religious authorities are on the front line of resolving family disputes. Our aim, above all, is not so much to defend the rights of women, but the children's future. We try to make sure that the child keeps both parents. According to Chechen tradition, when there is a divorce, the children go to the father's family. But when we ask about Ramzan Kadyrov's position on these issues, the conversation is abruptly cut short. Stop there, please. You must not speak about that. You must not speak about Ramzan Armatovich. To talk openly, we have to leave Chechnya and head to the neighboring republic of Ingushetia. So-called honor crimes are rife across large parts of the Russian Caucasus. Saida Sirajudinova, a sociologist specializing in gender issues, has been studying the phenomenon closely. The explosion in honor killings is a relatively recent phenomenon. It's due first and foremost to neo-traditionalism, that is, the attempt to bring old traditions back to life by reinterpreting them. Saida believes there are far more so-called honor killings than the 50 or so she's been able to confirm. 
This is a characteristic of our region. There's a crime, but society is silent. In most cases, even the mothers try to dissimulate the tragedy because they're dependent on the community and on other family members. It would be good if we in Chechenia, us women, were listened to like that. If there would be an institution independent of a ruler. Stuck in a shelter far from Chechnya, Milana dreams of free speech whilst watching Russian TV shows where victims of domestic violence express themselves openly. Today in Chechnya, on the surface, everything seems okay, but in every Chechen family, there are girls like me who are suffering, who are beaten by their parents, who have no rights, not even the right to go outside. Leaving a huge weight of tradition behind her, she faces an uncertain future.